diagram so this is the classical gaucher cell showing the accumulation of glucocerebroside within the lysosomes and because of this bilayer stack configuration there is looking like as if the paper has become you know as if you have crushed a paper okay and then you have made the paper a straight so this is the classical gaucher cell showing the crumpled tissue paper appearance as you can appreciate it is as if you have taken a piece of paper you have crushed it and then when you open it again so how the creases are seen the crumpled tissue paper appearance this is the classical feature and very very important exam question okay Good morning and welcome back myself Dr Jibran Ahmed presents to you simply pathology and today we are back with another very important high yield topic series number 6 so today we are going to understand about gaucher's disease a very repeatedly asked exam question very hot exam question so gaucher's disease why is it so much important to read about gaucher's disease because it is the most common lysosomal storage disorder it is a autosomal recessive disorder and it occurs because of mutation in a gene which is encoding an enzyme that is called as glucocerebrosidase so it occurs because of the mutation in the genes encoding glucocerebrosidase now what is the normal function of this enzyme glucocerebrosidase so this enzyme catabolizes glucocerebroside which is a ceramide and this glucocerebroside is mainly derived from the cell membrane of senescent leukocytes and rbcs so very importantly this is very important to catabolize glucocerebroside so in this particular gaucher's disease there is a reduced glucocerebrosidase activity very very important in exam mcq so which enzyme activity is reduced you should be able to answer it is glucocerebrosidase so reduced glucocerebrosidase activity normally it is catabolizing glucocerebroside and in absence of this activity there will be accumulation of this particular substrate that is glucocerebroside now that is going to lead to accumulation of glucocerebroside within the lysosomes of the mononuclear phagocyte system which is nothing but the liver spleen lymph node okay and also not only they this glucocerebroside is going to accumulate within the lysosomes of the mononuclear phagocyte system but they will also accumulate in the central nervous system in certain subtypes of gaucher's disease so in addition to the clinical features okay due to the excessive accumulation of uh, due to the excessive accumulation inside the lysosomes the pathological features of gaucher's disease is also because of a stimulation of the macrophages which releases certain cytokines like interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and tumor necrosis factor so this is a very very important additional finding that not only the clinical features occur because of excessive accumulation of glucocerebroside in the lysosomes but also it occurs because of the stimulation of macrophages and subsequent release of the cytokines interleukin 1 6 and tumor necrosis factor now if you look at the classification of the gaucher's disease gaucher's disease can be of three main types type 1 gaucher disease that is the chronic non neuronopathic with sparing of the cns type 2 acute neuronopathic with involvement of the central nervous system and then we are having the type 3 which is intermediate between the type 1 and type 2 so looking at the features of the type 1 gaucher's disease it is in fact the most common form contributing to 99% of all the cases of gaucher's disease now this is characterized by reduced enzyme activity but at least some enzyme activity is present most of the patient survives into adulthood so the patients over here they are adults there is no involvement of the brain seen in type 1 gaucher's disease and patients have massive splenomegaly and, and lymphadenopathy and very importantly they have a jewish predilection so if you see any of these uh, basic history in the question then you should think that we are dealing with the type 1 gaucher's disease in contrast if you look at the type 2 gaucher's disease okay they are basically presenting in the infant uh, so at a lesser age they are presenting and they have a more acute course involving these cerebrum so we call it as the infantile acute cerebral pattern now in case of type 1 at least some activity was there but over here no enzyme activity is present over here the cns was not involved in type 1 but in type 2 there is a progressive cns involvement leading to early death so survival into adulthood is not possible in type 2 and the type 2 doesn't involve the jew so these are the four very important points to differentiate the type 2 uh, gaucher's disease from type 1 now 
there is something called as a type 3 gauchers disease which is intermediate between the type 1 and type 2 now they have all these systemic features just like the type 1 gauchers disease but they also have progressive cns disease that begins in adolescence and ends into early adulthood okay that begins in early adolescence uh, adolescence and early adulthood okay very very important coming to the morphology of gauchers disease so classically we are going to appreciate the presence of distended gaucher cells these are nothing but the phagocytic cells okay so actually the accumulation is taking place within the lysosome of the macrophages or the phagocytes mostly in the mononuclear phagocyte system involving the spleen liver bone marrow and the lymph node Now, in contrast to other kinds of lysosomal storage disease, Gaucher's disease, they are rarely vacuolated, so they do not show any vacuolation of the cytoplasm. Instead, they have a characteristic appearance characterized by the presence of a fibrillary cytoplasm. So, the nature of the cytoplasm is fibrillary, and this fibrillary nature of the cytoplasm gives rise to what is called as a crumpled tissue paper appearance. Very, very important MCQ for the exam. so classically this is having a crumpled tissue paper appearance okay now the gaucher cells if you see these cells they have enlarged and eccentrically placed nucleus so approximately they become expanded up to 100 micrometer in size and these cells are classically pass positive very very important they are pass positive under the electron microscope if you see the, the fibrillary cytoplasm is nothing but the fibrillary nature of the cytoplasm occurs because of the elongated distended lysosomes containing the stored lipid in bilayered stack so this lysosomes containing the lipids in the bilayered stack form is contributing to the fibrillary nature of the cytoplasm now let us look at this classical diagram so this is the classical gaucher cell showing the accumulation of glucocerebroside within the lysosomes and because of this bilayered stack configuration there is looking like as if the paper has become you know as if you have crushed a paper okay and then you have made the paper straight so this is the classical gaucher cell showing the crumpled tissue paper appearance as you can appreciate it is as if you have taken a piece of paper you have crushed it and then when you open it again so how the creases are seen the crumpled tissue paper appearance this is the classical feature and very very important exam question okay now what are the other special stains so we have already seen that one pass stain is coming out positive in the gaucher cell other stain which is very important to help to make the diagnosis of gaucher cell is the presence of is the pearl stain the pearl stain is basically uh, it is going to highlight the presence of iron the oil red o stain is going to highlight the lipids and other uh, very important stain is the tartrate resistance acid phosphatase staining so these are the three important other special stains for the gaucher cell now what is the differential diagnosis of gaucher cell so what are other cells that look like gaucher cells but they are not gaucher cells in the true sense these are called as the pseudo gaucher cells so they are called as the pseudo gaucher cell now these pseudo gaucher cells are nothing but these are the bone marrow macrophages which are seen in conditions associated with highly proliferating tumors or uh, tumors with a very high cell or any condition associated with a high cell turnover for example in case of a proliferating leukemia so proliferating le leukemic cells okay which are dying okay their membrane are phagocytosed by histiocytes in the bone marrow and these histiocytes containing the membranes of the dying or highly proliferating leukemic cells okay these are actually called as the pseudo gaucher cells so they are looking like the gaucher cells but they are not the true gaucher cells so how will you differentiate a gaucher cell from a pseudo gaucher cell in that situation the pearl staining of iron comes into the picture so the gaucher cells will show diffuse iron staining whereas no such staining will be seen in case of pseudo gaucher cell under the electron microscopy you are going to see the gaucher cells are going to contain a typical tubular cytoplasmic inclusions will be present whereas no such inclusions are present in case of pseudo gaucher cell so where do we find these pseudo gaucher cells so pseudo gaucher cells classically and most importantly they are present in 40% cases of the cml in which case they looks uh, you know bluish in color and they are called as c blue histiocytes they can be seen in other conditions associated with high cell turnover like acute lymphoblastic leukemia multiple myeloma myelodysplasia and hodgkins disease 
Now this is a very important diagram as you can appreciate over here these cells that you can see these are the marrow macrophages present in the cells with uh, present in conditions associated with high cell turnover wherein these macrophages has eaten up the uh, cell membrane of the dying cells okay so these are nothing but the pseudo gaucher cells and they are past negative these are the pseudo gaucher cells and they are pass negative they are pass negative they do not show diffuse staining of iron they are pass negative and also they are if you do the pearl stain pearl stain okay they will show absence of iron they will show absence of iron okay there is no diffuse staining of iron present in pseudo gaucher cell now in case of type 1 disease if you look at the type 1 disease there is a massive splenic enlargement because in type 1 disease the cns involvement is not there so spleen increases in size sometimes up till 10 kg in size now accumulation of the gaucher cells in the bone marrow is seen in 70 to 100% of the cases and this accumulation of gaucher cell in the bone marrow causes the bone erosion and fractures as well because of the secretion of cytokines by the activated macrophages which causes bone resorption also so this is the mechanism of bone erosion and fracture in type 1 gaucher's disease in type 2 gaucher's disease or in disease where there is a cns involvement it has been seen that the gaucher cells are present in a typical space that is called as virchin robin spaces now there is no st uh, storage of lipids inside the neurons yet the neurons are progressively destroyed okay so what is the basic cause uh, for the same can anyone tell me so basically over here uh, the cytokines that is released by the activated macrophages might uh, be responsible for this pathogenesis okay very very important feature clinically if you look at gaucher's disease the type 1 gaucher's disease clinically they first appear in the adult life as we have already discussed before and they present with massive splenomegaly with bone marrow involvement pancytopenia thrombocytopenia will be there because of the characteristic bone marrow involvement and this can also occur secondary to hypersplenism wherein the spleen is trapping the uh, all the wbcs and the rbcs leading to reduced counts pathological fractures of the bone is also there along with the bone pain because of the bone marrow involvement and these individuals are compatible and they have a long life they survive into adulthood on the other hand if you see the type 2 individuals they show cns dysfunction they will show convulsions and progressive mental deterioration and death occurs early in such patients the basic treatment of gaucher's disease is replacement therapy you have to replace that particular enzyme which is deficient so you have to replace it with the recombinant enzymes the cost of the enzyme it is very very expensive so in type 1 individuals with uh, with replacement therapy there is a normal life the second important uh, treatment that we can go is allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplant the third is transfer of normal glucocerebrosidase producing genes into the patient's hematopoietic stem cells and lastly is the substrate substrate reduction therapy you decrease the intake of glucocerebroside so with this we have completed another very important high yield topic that is gaucher's disease which is the most common lysosomal storage disease and definitely an exam question thank you very much guys and if you think that i have contributed to, uh, in your reading in some way kindly do share and subscribe to my channel thank you very much